Siege. Riley. Taz. Yeah. Set me free and give me death. There ain't no other choices. When I lay down and go to sleep, I keep on hearing voices. Little whispers in my head, man. Is you fake or loyal? Find no water, death to sign a baby, pick your poison. These little demons living underneath my bed, creeping. Know the real monster lives above them all, sleeping. That subtle breathing in your closet every single evening. Thought you never see me again. Looks can be deceiving. When they hear the sound of the drum, they'll be saying, oh Lord, here they come. Yeah, here we come. We take play seriously. That's why ATK chooses Omen by HP and Windows 10. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to more Overwatch by ATK action. We are here to bring you more of stage two of the Elite Division, the first Elite Division game that we're going to be getting to cast, and it's going to be Vanguard Overwatch taking on EVO Esports. I am Altruism. Joining me here tonight is Sun Phoenix. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. You know, not the game we were meaning to cast today, but unfortunately, yeah. load shedding has, has thrown everything into disarray. So. We kind of have to kind of have to fly by the seat of our pants, so to speak, and cast whatever games are available. And you know, I think this should be a fun one, even if it's not the one we thought we were going to be covering. Oh man, uh, this is still Elite Division Overwatch in South Africa. We have some great teams here, and arguably this is going to be a closer game than we could have been seeing. But um, oh, yeah. both these teams certainly bring a lot of, of experience to the Overwatch team. We've got Evo Esports, who have been such a consistent roster lately, just really getting those six players playing together for a long, long time. We've got people like Maestro and Big Tuna setting up that tank line in the front line. Maestro sometimes a little bit over ambitious as a player, um, as the run hard charging in there um but cheetah boy and jelly doodle bringing up that dps uh combo behind them both of them very very apt at getting good consistent shots and good consistency out of their damage certainly someone you could build a team around obviously pulling out people like that ash who's been we've been seeing a lot of lately and 420 and space panda 420 playing a lucio of note and space panda fa favoring that anna so always a viable pick target coming out for evo esports yeah, she's going to be someone that Vanguard are going to look to punish, kind of dismantle what EVO Esports are trying to bring. But talking about Vanguard and looking at their squad, a squad we're mostly familiar with, but a couple of new faces, I think, that are going to look to show their stuff today in the Elite Division. We have Stalker on that main tank, somebody we know quite well in that position for this team. We've got James on that off tank, uh, off tank. of course, someone we know more for his DPS prowess, but he's been on the off tank role for Vanguard for a couple of weeks now, so settling in nicely there, I think. Pyro as well, a DPS well known for this team. And then we've got Damien coming in, I believe from Team Valiance actually. So a new recruit for the Vanguard squad, hopefully an upgrade from their former DPS, or at least that's what Vanguard will be hoping, of course. And then we've got Phoenix and Possum rounding things out on the support. So a few slight changes here. Damien, of course, the most notable. And we've got Lynx waiting in the wings as well, perhaps hoping to step in as a substitute. So Vanguard with a few changes as they moved up into the elite division here. And they're going to hope to use those that new squad to kind of take the fight to Evo, a team which is definitely of these two the more favoured one coming into this matchup this evening. I was wondering about that because, you know, neither of these teams, we don't have any head-to-head -head records for these guys of yeah. them actually clashing. So, you know... We know how they play well against other teams. We can always measure teams by, you know, we beat these guys and then they beat you. So you can get that sort of order going on. But do you think that there's going to be any interesting strats designated for Vanguard bringing into this matchup? Uh, you, you mean Evo designating towards Vanguard yes, or yeah. the other round? Okay. I well, don't think... I don't think Evo does anything special here. I think Evo's coming in as the stronger of these two teams. Mm -hmm. Um, on paper at least, they're going to look and come in here, do their thing, play their game and execute well and that should be enough to carry them through. They are, as I say, the better of the two teams. It's actually, in my opinion, up to Vanguard to bring something That's special here, if anything. That's um, why I guess will Vanguard pull out something really weird that they, they're going to try it out? Um, because, you know, now with no hero bans, teams mm -hmm. can pick out that sort of whatever strat that they know and knowing the maps that we're going into yeah. guys, if you haven't seen how the new structuring of overwatch competitive overwatch goes it's we have a very set map pool that we have to work through teams don't get a pick anymore which means that teams are able to practice their matchups 
completely going into any sort of tournament. Yeah, I think as far as the teams are concerned, and you know, we I can I can give you a bit of a behind the scenes look here. We as the the admins actually put it to the team captains and said, "What would you guys prefer?" We gave a couple of options of how we could run the maps, and overwhelmingly, teams were in favor of running a set group of five maps. So. The teams are really happy to have this kind of focused style they can practice towards they know. First up, uh, this week is going to be Oasis. That's what we practice. We mm -hmm. come up with strats on this map where we can execute well. Um, so I think that that's a much bigger change than not having hero pools, actually, because now the teams know. And more important than what heroes you can play in a lot of ways is the maps you can play for how you yeah. build strategies. You can come up on, you can come to Icon Vault, for example, and say, but well, this is how we're going to play Icon Vault. We know how we want to execute. We know what we want to do but first up we are going to be having oasis here so should be an interesting map here it's going to really set the tone for the series going forward you know i like the the fact that we have designated maps because <laughs> when overwatch's hero pool was so small it used to become like an almost rock paper scissors hero matchup and then you would play mm -hmm. certain comps against other certain comps and then you would adapt that comp to maybe the map that you were playing these days has gotten so much more about what map am i playing and which heroes are going to excel for a specific job here. So, you know, the heroes are not locked in at the beginning and teams can really start playing around with any ideas. Here we have the gardens, you know, very vertical map, very enclosed map um, that these guys are going to be fighting into. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see what these guys picking up. Uh, Maestro and the rest of EVO looking for more of a dive comp yeah. where Van got more of a brawl comp, pick comp. Evo like to run this dive composition. Usually we do see Big Tuna on that Diva, but look to run the hamster here and they're gonna run cheetah boy on the doom first jelly doodle on the trace so on the other side we see uh the most meta composition at least at the highest level of overwatch on the previous patch you're looking to really enable your genji and make sure he's the one doing most of the work in these teams so we're going to be looking at pyro here to be a big impact player for vanguard i like that phoenix has gone with this Brigida, you know, Brigida is one of the hardest counters for a dive. If you jump into a Brigida and she stuns you up and just shuts you down as a dive tank or dive character, it can be very devastating. So Cheetah Boy especially um, going to be looking to watch out for that. Oh, Jelly Doodle goes down very instantly. At the beginning of this 420, managing to threaten on this high ground now. They managed to shut off Vanguard Overwatch. It's such a good initiation. Yeah, a uh, really, really strong initiation, like you say. And unfortunately, you immediately see the downside of, of that kind of rollout from Vanguard. You put your back to the cliff, and when you've got heroes like Doomfist and 420's Lucio, you're putting yourself in a really easy position to get removed from the map very swiftly. So unfortunately, Vanguard going to have to think about how they approach that one. But like I said, Pyro, already up to 60% towards his ultimate. So could be that ultimate could be a good way to open things up. Vanguard. Well, so far it's Evo doing the initiating onto everyone here, just laying onto the front line. So far, Maestro is going to get out that Primal Rage now. It's just going to put on a huge amount of disruption into the back lines here. Manages to fight someone. Pyro doing some work on the Genji on the back line, though. He has a lot of HP to try and eat through. Stalker now going to be left pushed back, and Evo just initiating on their terms. Yeah, absolutely. And Cheetah Boy getting nice and aggressive with that Doomfist has helped him build up his ultimate pyro, though, on the other side has that blade. So it's going to be interesting to see how they are able to use that. But tempo favoring Evo quite significantly. They've got a lot of high damage ultimates and space control in the form of Big Tuna. And it's going to be up to Vanguard to see if they can weather the storm here in this next team fight. Oh, oh those mines coming out into the back line, along with the tracer bomb, means that the positional disadvantage um, goes towards Vanguard. Vanguard picking, getting picked off very, very quickly. Such nice clean engagement, and Pyro just holding onto that dragon blade knows that it's not worth it. Yeah, very expensive team fight though from Evo. Look at what they committed. They committed Big Tuna's mines. They committed Cheetah Boy's ultimate, and they committed the pulse bomb. They only have support alties, which are great, but that's said they do have 80 percent up in the clock so it's going to be a bit of a scramble fight here from vanguard and see if they can actually get in here for a team fight yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the very obvious counter to that um blade is going to be the beats they managed to pick off the early kill on big tuna and so all oh, power is going to go down straight away that punch shuts them out and that's them out of the team fight now the rest of his team has to try and make something happening but it's all going evo's way they're managing to get onto the point there goes the uh, beats that's going to drop onto the point to just try and secure this poor stalker is left alone there on point and while power is trying to get back to point that dragon blade being completely left over 
<laughs> well, you heard it pop there inside spawn. We won't get to see what it looks like, unfortunately. I was coming onto the point. And, I was trying hard. Uh, yeah, you're trying to get those extra dashes in with the ultimate. But this is just Evo playing Evo's game, man. They just want to play aggressive. They just want to get on top of you and force you to solve the problem that they're presenting. That's something I talk about a lot when I do analysis is that you need to be in a position where you're making the team play at your speed and that's what Evo's doing they're getting so nice and aggressive with the heroes they have and using them to perfection and even through those expensive team fights making it so that in order for um vanguard to build up ultimates they have to take these short team fights and by the time they've got ultimates to use it's the last fight and you can see what happens when you're in a position moving into this team uh, this map though we do have a similar look coming out of both teams here, although they have switched off the dive on the side of Vanguard. They do have the pharmacy on the side of Evo. So, see how this unfolds. It's going to be difficult for Vanguard to threaten that pharmacy in the air. They just don't have any DPS that can really try and take them out. And so, Evo does manage to claim this high ground in the front. And once you've got that high ground with people like Soldier on the top there, you can just keep everyone so safe there, lay down covering fire in any way. And it's going to be Evo that's going to be chasing this all the way back. Vanguard, without even losing a proper fight, get pushed completely back. Yeah, I like I like that we're seeing Vanguard change things up here. I think their previous composition had all the tools it needed to to actually deal with what Evo were running, but for whatever reason, Vanguard weren't able to execute in that way. This time, they're deciding to fight fire with fire. We're running the dive into the dive, so we're going to have to see if this is a better look for them or if Evo are just going to beat them down in the mirror matchup. I think the hard part here is Vanguard is just going to struggle to threaten this high ground here. They've only got two characters or three really that can really push them to the high ground. We see Stalker going to jump straight in. James as well. James almost going down completely instantly in that fight. Just such big targets to aim at that it just allows the DPS here for Evo to do so much damage, pin them into any corner. And Vanguard just trying to take some positional advantage here loses the fight before it even begins. Yeah, they are struggling, man. Evo in such control here. I think we've seen one hero, maybe two heroes die on the side of evo esports so in control of proceedings are they and in the same vein they have so many ultimates to use now closing in on their support ultis but they've got their pharmacy um sorry rocket barrage they've got both tank ultimates and uh vanguard only really closing in on the rally and stalkers primal rage so not much to work with here for vanguard evo should take this one quite easily Oh, I love that use of bubble and defensive matrix to try and keep the Pharaoh alive there, but that doesn't do enough damage. And so that's one ultimate out. And Maestro, though, cleaning up in the back line, using that Paramore Rage to shut them into the corner. Meanwhile, we've got Big Tuna on the, the points, just managing to hold it so far. And now even dedicating the Valkyrie at the end of this fight. Not 100% sure this was needed. Maybe a little bit much of a wasted ultimate. Just wanting to get Maestro back up onto the point and not give away any positional advantage. And Vanguard have only one more shot. They do, but they're coming in with a lot of ultimates now. So say what you will, they have been economical in these team fights. And looks like they're not going to get the chance to start how they want to, though. Oh, that's going to be big. Possum didn't have his ultimate, but he would have liked to be there to try and keep some most of the damage going. Oh, now we see the Dragon Blade coming out. Arrow has to do a lot of work. Manages to get the Space Pan at the beginning. They also shut down Jelly Dude's ultimate, which means that Vanguard has a good opportunity in this. They can try and clean up a little bit. Cheetah Boy's back on point after being rezzed, but the Pharmacy is going to be difficult to try and keep this going the whole way through. They've also got Maestro on the point, but still some blue presence here as Vanguard wants to fight this out all the way. James and Tracer are just trying to do some work. They do fan finally manage to get Maestro out, and Vanguard takes their first fight. They've only got one ultimate left, though. Yeah, they, I just spoke about how economical they were being and whether or not that was their choice or forced by the way Evo is playing. I mean, it's up for debate. Actually, I don't think it's up for debate. I think it was definitely because Evo is forcing it. But that said, they do manage to get a team fight with most of the ultimates, but they commit so much, as you said. So they're going to be in a really difficult position here and Tempo is favoring Evo. They can take as many fights as they want, up to 100%, of course, before they are in any kind of trouble. Vanguard has this high ground advantage though, which is going to allow their Ana to stay safe. The rest of the team can jump in and out of this fight as they need to. So they put the pressure on, they've got the pick on 420, she's going to be up quite quickly. It was before the fight actually started though, and so Vanguard now in arguably a much more defensible position. Yeah, absolutely, and and that's a critical team fight win. You know, you, you have the opportunity now to start building that ultimate economy now back towards your favor, but that's a really bad start. Phoenix going down might be exactly what Evo needs to push on through. You know, if they can put that pressure on to Possum as the last support there, our Pyro is going to go into the back line now, just 
Trying to dodge up and down there. Is the rest of Evo has pushed Ooh, onto the point though. So it's going to be James to try to find the stalker in the back line. Manages to get Space Panda. And now they're fighting in the street. Oh, he gets clipped by the car. Maestro managing to knock. Knock him out into the streets and take, get taken down. The rest of Evo now coming through to fight out this fight. They've just got Possum, uh, Phoenix, sorry, who's managed to get back to point. And while Lucio can stall this out for a while, it's going to be difficult to stall this out all the way there. Phoenix is finally going to go down. The power of that Maestro Cannon. And while they're get on? Oh, Stalker oh. trying to get on the point, doesn't. I thought he was going to be able to get on there, man. Yeah, Evo, Evo in firm control here, but okay. At the end of that, we did see some signs of life coming out of Vanguard. The really nice play actually from Stalker, getting nice and aggressive, knowing he had the Primal Rage in the bank. Got on the back line, got the pick they needed to equalize things up. And from there, unfortunately, I think just better mechanics and better focus fire from Evo actually helped them secure that team fight. We saw them also, Big Tuna getting a little bit aggressive on his own, but did in a batting. But yeah, Evo, in the driver's seat here looking super super strong super super well put together and we're gonna have to see now going forward if vanguard can deal with this aggressive dive that evo are presenting them with you know i found especially in that second uh, point there vanguard had a really nice team comp for defending the high ground but they never got to the high ground. Evo was so aggressive and so forward as a team that they were able to get the numbers on the top, get the positional advantage. And from there, Vanguard struggled for most of that map to fight into them. And once they got them unseated, they actually won two team fights after that, where they were able to hide that, hold that high ground. So mm -hmm. Vanguard plays their game, then they can, I think they can adjure the Evo onslaught onto them. But the problem mm -hmm. is Evo's taking the initial fights, the initial momentum, and using that to snowball all the way through the rest of the map. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think we're going to go into a short break here. Uh, I think we're just having some issues with the stream. So we'll just take a two-minute break here, guys. We'll be back in one moment. 